special meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Um, all the members here are present. Uh, we are audio and video recording this meeting. We also have a court reporter with us. Is there any public comment on any issue not before us on the agenda? Seeing none, then we move to the first item. Uh, briefly, we had a, a question of renewing a package store license at our last meeting. Uh, but however, it was pending um, an agreement between the, uh, the licensee and the city regarding some arrears of taxes. We have a memo from, um, uh, from the tax department saying that this has been settled. So um, we would have no reason then, I believe, not to renew for 2015 package store license for Doyle's package store in Florence. So I'll ask for a motion to uh, renew the uh, all alcohol package store license. I'll move to uh, renew Doyle's package store license. Second. Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 The, uh, the remaining item on our agenda is a violation hearing on uh, package store license uh, 008. Are you asking to pause for one? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sorry. Okay. Can you hear us okay? I can. Okay. And anybody you want to identify yourself in case you catch up, please okay. go ahead and, and jump in there. Um, this violation hearing concerns Hingley Corporation. Uh, doing business, I suppose, as King Street Liquors at 166 King Street. Uh, the manager is Bupendra Patel. Uh, the dates of the violations are October 25th and November 15th of this year. Uh, I see the chief, and chief, if you would just um, uh, tell us uh, the gist of the violation. Sure. Okay. Well, actually, wait a second, let me just... Um, Witnesses, yeah, let me swear on the witnesses. I'm sorry. Um, the um, uh, okay, anyone who expects to speak to the commission on this matter, please stand. Raise your hand. Uh, do you affirm that all the information you're about to give at this hearing is is true and complete? Say I do. Say I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, Chief, I'm sorry, go ahead then. Okay, you, you have a memo in front of me, or in front of you today regarding my request. You also have the actual forms that were filled out on the various different violations. Um, you have, it's kind of a two-pronged thing. We have one group that is actually dealing with the underage sale to people that weren't ID'd. That's complaint number one. And there's four parts of that. And then there's a secondary about the use of false IDs uh, for this. But to summarize, just for the record, uh, my memo, <clears throat> that early October this year, we received information from the assistant dean of students at UMass that during their disciplinary procedures investigating underage use of liquor on campus, administrators discovered many were reporting their source of liquor was well known amongst uh, social media users to be King Street Liquors in Northampton. The reputation was who would either, they would not card you or they would accept out of state or other IDs, which are not allowed under Mass General Laws 13834B. As a result of this information, we then planned for an underage operation check on whether King Street Liquor was in fact selling to minors without checking IDs, and we did so on October 25th. Um, results which are the central part of this violation for underage teens are served with no request whatsoever for an ID. Sergeant Caputo was in charge of that operation. It was done in conjunction with uh, Spiffy, or what's it called now? NPC, Northampton Prevention Coalition. Northampton Prevention Coalition, uh, where teenagers are recruited. Sergeant Caputo will get up and summarize the kind of the elaborate um, airtight uh, procedure that we do to actually set it up. Uh, the identification of kids, make sure they weren't drinking, the whole nine yards he'll go through, and then he'll walk you through each of the four violations that occurred on October 25th. Okay. Sorry, is that Caputo? Afternoon board members, uh, my name is Victor Puto, Sergeant Northampton PD. Um, as the Chief said, um, I got information. As everybody comes up to speak, if they could just uh, clearly and loudly say their complete name for the transcriptionist, that would be helpful. It's Victor Caputo, C-A-P-U-T-O. Thank you. Thanks. Um, 
as the chief said, we got information from UMass that they had got some type of information that King Street Liquors was selling to uh, underage kids. Uh, I got asked to put together a compliance check, uh, directed compliance check on King Street Liquors. Uh, Working with Northam Prevention Coalition, a couple of their sources, we managed to get six underage operatives uh, Saturday, October 25th. Basically, anytime we do this, we meet at the station, we do a few things. Uh, prior to the uh, operation, each kid is given a portable breath test. If they have any alcohol in their system, they're not allowed to participate. We also have them empty their pockets, give them a visual search as they do so, make sure they don't have anything other than the cash we give to them when we go to the door and their cellular phone and see if they have one. Um, then, as we go one by one, we also take a picture of them before and after to preserve how they looked um, you know, throughout the course of the operation. So uh, once all that is done, they sign uh, a guideline form, which explains to them you know, what we're doing, what's expected. They're told that if they're asked for ID, if they're asked if they're old enough, if there's any attempt at all on the store owner or the clerk to uh, you know, ascertain if they're old enough, they're supposed to just, oh, sorry, I, I forgot my ID, make up some excuse, they leave, that's good enough. Um, so we had six underage operatives. We started the operation around six, uh, 02 p.m. The first one was a 17-year-old uh, uh, white male, drove him to the store. He was provided with $20 of department money. He went in, he was in there for about a minute. He exited the store um, with a six pack of 16 ounce uh, Miller Lite beer. Um, when we got back, you checked the change versus the amount he paid for the beer, make sure no alcohol, no uh, money's missing second portal breath test, and a second picture is done. Um, the second attempt we did was with a 19-year-old white female. Um, she was driven to the store about 15 minutes later. She went in, she was in the store for approximately three minutes. Um, she came out, she had been able to purchase a four-pack of um, Seagram's margarita-flavored wine coolers. Um, same thing, money matched the sale. Um, she was brought back, second breath test, picture. Our third attempt was with a 16-year-old white male. Um, he was actually asked for ID and was not sold alcohol. Um, same procedure goes through, second uh, PBT, picture taken. Fourth attempt was with a 16-year-old male. Um, he was able to purchase a six-pack of Bush Light beer, uh, 12 ounce cans. Um, money matched up. Um, so then uh, bring it back to the PD. Portable breath test was given, second picture taken. Uh, our fifth attempt was utilizing a 19 year old male who was able to purchase a 12 pack of Stella beer in bottles. Um, and uh, same thing, money matched the account as he told us, portable breath test, picture. And our final attempt was using a 19 year old male who was asked for ID and was not able to purchase alcohol. So our six attempts, four were um, successful and those teens were able to get the uh, alcohol. At the end of the operation, we bring everyone back. We have the teens verbally point out who they actually had bought from. Violations one and four were by Clerk uh, Krupalai Patel and violations two and three were uh, Anna Bellin Patel. And, uh, that's pretty much the summary of the operation as it went that night. Um, did you have um, any? Uh, you had you actually had five go in or six six, six, six go in and two were denied. Two nine four real. That's right. The, and at that point, the uh, the kids just 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 they just around. abort. They just leave the, they the, just booze. Leave the, thing on the booze. They walk out. They tell me, out. "Hey, I didn't do it. I'm in the car. Watch them coming in. Watch mm -hmm. them coming out. And I'm checking off what time they're coming in, what time they're coming out, and if they purchased or not. Okay. And they also fill out a brief little statement at the end, uh, mm -hmm. summarizing whether they were able to buy or whether they were not able to buy. Sergeant, uh, with respect to the, the two that were in fact carded, do you know which clerk? I do not. Okay. Brian, do you have questions? Okay. Um, that's all for now. I may ask you something else okay. in a second. Um, Chief, did you have another officer who wanted to testify in these four no. uh, packages? Or? Compartmentalizing them? 
I, I think so. Here's what I'll do. Um, we agree that this makes sense. This, we'll, we'll talk about we'll get the, uh, information on the, the sting, really, that, that happened here. And those four incidents uh, count, uh, would be considered together. And then we'll uh, ask to hear from the, uh, uh, from the licensee on those. And then uh, we'll move from there to the, uh, to the other ones where the officers observe people leaving the store. Uh, we'll get the statements from the NPD and then we'll hear from the licensee on those. Is that agreeable to you? That's fine. Okay. The chief. Mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Um, so, um, does the department have anything else to add? <coughs> uh, I would, based on comments uh, from the owner in the paper, if he wasn't present, I would just ask you to remember that our own license commission rules say owners and managers are responsible for their premises, whether they're on premise or not. So I just want to remind you that I'm sure you're familiar with this. Duly reminded, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, Attorney Schimmel. Yeah. Bupender Patel. Mr. B. Patel? Yeah. Bupend, it's B H U P E N D R A Patel, P A T E L. And he is the manager of Hingway Corporation. Uh, the, the other individuals who were referred to uh, are. Uh, Anila Patel, who is uh, Rupenda's wife, and his daughter, Rupala. Uh, both of them are currently in India. They have been there uh, since January 11th because his daughter is being married, and uh, this was something that had been scheduled for some period of time. December 11th? Do you mean December 11th? Uh, no, no I, I said uh, yeah. January 11th. Uh, they're leaving. Uh, they'll be coming back in, in uh, January 11th. Yeah. So, so you're right. saying that these, Octo these October violations, they were not in they, No, they were present. They were present in the store. Uh, let, let me let me back up and okay. um, let me back up and maybe uh, I was just I was just trying to identify who we were talking about and, and, and maybe if I just sort of clarify they were present on October 25th who was not present on October 25th was the manager Mr. Patel who is usually present in the store and works virtually all the hours that the store is open. Uh, he was not present on October 25th because he was in the, uh, New Jersey at a funeral. Uh, the former owner uh, of the store, Yogesh Patel's father, had passed away and uh, the friend had gone to New Jersey to attend his funeral and was there on October 25th. He left his wife, uh, Anila, and his daughter, Kupali, in charge of the store. Uh, basically, uh, other than that, uh, we would not dispute the chief's description of what took place. Uh, they, uh, when I say they, Anila and Kupali, were not really experienced in working in the store. They knew generally what they were supposed to do. Uh, unfortunately, uh, their training was lacking. Uh, we can't and do not dispute that, uh, that it, the individuals were served when they should not have been served. I would point out, obviously, though, that as, as uh, was noted, that two of the individuals were in fact turned away. So there was, uh, 
there was an attempt, at least on their part, to uh, attempt to enforce the law, uh, they they just unfortunately lacked the experience that would have been necessary to properly run the store, and uh, that uh, that. Uh, in and of itself, uh, we also concede that the, the manager is responsible uh, simply under the rules and that uh, it, it certainly would have been appropriate had uh, Mrs. Patel and uh, Mr. Patel's daughter been trained, been better experienced uh, at, at handling the store, but they weren't. Uh, and uh, that, that's something that, uh, that would be addressed and would be corrected before they, if at any point, would be uh, working in the store again. Uh, so, uh, as I say, there were, there, we admit four violations. I think it's to their credit that they did, in fact, turn two individuals away. Uh, it, it was somewhat of a unique situation. Uh, being occasioned by the, the funeral and the absence of Mr. Patel. And that's, that's essentially the, uh, the, the uh, licensee's description of the events. Uh, and do we have a statement from, um, we were usually, as you know, uh, we might ask the clerk a question in a case like this, and certain questions about what happened as well, since we've heard from the officers. Uh, speaking for the underage people who they sent in, uh, do we have a statement from uh, his wife or daughter? Uh, we do not. Uh, I was actually only contacted on this very recently. I want to say recently, uh, at the end of last week. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I do not have uh, such a statement. I didn't have the didn't have the opportunity to obtain that. And, uh, and, and when when did uh, when did the manager's wife and daughter leave the United States? December second. What you? December second. Yeah. December second. Uh, you can identify yourself. Yes, yes. thank you. I am Ms. Sandrana Patel. Okay. Are we, can I swear you in since you yes. said yeah. it before? Do you affirm that all the information you're about to give is true and complete? Yes, I do. I'm oh, sorry, your name again? Rana Patel. Okay. So they, they left to India December 2nd. Okay. And they will be returning February 18th. Okay. Had, had we scheduled this hearing by that point? No? December 2nd? No. No, I don't think we have. It's on December 3rd, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so, were you, um, you had a chance to look at the, uh, department's memo on these violations, even though you came on fairly recently. Uh, I, saw them, I saw them the first time today. Okay. Did you, um, uh, you'll note that the, um, uh, the, uh, the thing that, that precipitated this was a report that the MPD got from UMass, and yes. um, throughout this report it uh, seems to be alleged that uh, it's well known social media, we knew we know where to go, sort of thing, not just UMass, but another, another college as well. So um, that is part of the uh, information I, I, I that has been presented to us here. Yeah. So. Yes. I, I understand, and uh, I, I do not have any information <coughs> that, that I can come forward with uh, that would address that. Mr. Patel, uh, in our discussions, uh, short as they were, uh, indicated to me that he understood his duty to uh, to card all patrons and uh, stated to me that it was his practice to do so. Uh, and uh, so that, that uh, I think that you would verify that, correct? Well, you could speak to the commission. But you didn't speak to him, right? Uh, I, no, I understand, but but that you 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 understood it was your duty to to identify uh, 
patrons at the store. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I've been running this store the three years before, and I never got a never trouble in the liquor license. Because so every time you own the store for three years. Yeah, okay. but I never trouble because without ID I can't sell. And every ID I check, and then I look different sometimes. Then I I talk with him. Okay, what's your birthday? What's your address? And some different. So, so I I give the paper, and you do sign here. ID with me, and he sign here. I do check. I sign, and that time I give. Without, I can sell any person, and I know him because I have too much. Everybody coming, young young guy, and I look him, his eyes, and I understood that time the how old he. Mm -hmm. Okay, that time I know. Can this is twenty one year, twenty three year old, twenty four year old. That's I I know that, and that's I know, and I will check after I give him, and that time know that I can sell. Sorry. And he moved out of that. Besides your wife and daughter, who, yeah. what other clerks do you have at the store? How many others? No more time. No, no, when no. I, when uh, I who, who works behind the counter besides you, uh, your wife and your daughter, who are alleged in the complaint? Yeah. Are there are there others that work in the store? Perhaps you know? no. no. There's only three people ever behind the counter there. No, Perhaps only three people are sitting behind the counter. My wife and my daughter. Only Saturday and Sunday. Okay, when I go to temple, uh -huh. pray to God. That time, sir, my wife only two times, two hours, one hours work, one two hours, and my daughter only little bit, fifteen days after one only two hours. Okay. But there's no one else. No more. Could you you understand what I'm asking? Yes. Besides yes. the two clerks in question, who the MPD has alleged uh, sold to underage uh, uh, patrons. And Mr. Patel himself. That, that's what he. There's no one else who ever works behind the counter in that store. That's what's been represented to me. It's yeah, only, me. only the three of them. Only three. Only. Three. only three. So since you've had three years, yeah. there's no other clerk. No other way. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Brian. Do you have a question, Mr. Patel? Yes, Refusing. Okay, because we have you in my house. Okay. Yes. On social media, if that's the place to go. Then we also heard earlier his testimony stating that he works, you know, we'll call it 95% of the time, and that his wife and daughter only work a little bit. But yeah, he hires everyone. How do they get the reputation? I I think that I think that you've heard him say. Uh, you know, and and I think that there's something that I think that there that clearly. There is a need to address the the legal forms of ID. I think that, that Mr. Patel was talking about looking at people, and uh, and I think besides carding them, uh, sometimes you take an out-of-state ID. As Every well. time I need ID. Well, but sometimes you would take a. a, a but am I what let me just simply yeah. say this as briefly as I can. Because perhaps we need a translator, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Um because I want to make sure we understand exactly what this is. Yeah, I think saying. if the sign could come forward, it would be helpful. Uh it, 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 because my question is this, is Mr. Patel saying that at times he's going by his gut reaction. He's looking someone in the eyes and if he thinks they're telling him the truth, he accepts it. Is that what's happening here? Do you mind if I translate that? Please do. No, yeah. not at all. Please do. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Every time when you look ID, 23 year old, 25 year old, but need ID. But there, there's a in a what? When come here, you do, you like it, you do, you see, have it. That long, man, no, just must do, like that, do it. You, I'm very good, you do, you do, you must do, like that. You come here, need ID, must do ID. What he's trying to say is, even if he thinks that he's 24, 25, even 26 years old or even older, he still asks for the ID every time. That's okay. what he's trying to tell me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
do you have up in the store a there's a there's a placard you know what it looks like mm -hmm. uh, trying to show them, yes. um, with acceptable forms of ID is that hanging up on the wall in the store it has pictures of Massachusetts yeah, driver's license and passports and things yeah. like that I think so yes I think I think so sure I'm not Sergeant Caputo or Chief? Excuse Lord. me, I was conferencing with him. Okay. Is there a question? You, yeah. Did, when you went in the store, did you know say you know that thing that shows acceptable forms of ID? Yeah. Right? And it's supposed to be there's the there's the notice that says um, uh, they won't sell minors, the, the statutorily required notice that's up there. But there's also that color collage of acceptable forms of ID. I'm not sure. Right I did there. see just recently on their counter uh, the sign that says they all ID everyone for nicotine delivery systems or something like that right on the counter. But I'm not sure about alcohol. Uh, Okay. Yeah, go, oh, sorry, go ahead. We just wanted to know if the police had, had okay. noticed such a, a posting during the operation. Things are kind of crossing over to the second part of this more than dealing with the first part. The second part is the examples of using fake <coughs> IDs versus no IDs at all. Oh, no, 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 we're not. We're not, really, we're not yet, no, not getting to those violations. I think I'll, I'll ask for a statement on, from you on not that and then a statement from the, from the license and I know on that. Uh, the two women that were working that night weren't are not available for testimony, but they did give us a statement that night. And in fact, both of them, when they were advised that they were not in compliance, they uh, for Polly stated it was impossible for them to sell alcohol to under 21 because they asked everyone for ID. And if they could not provide it, then they were sent away uh, with no alcohol. She again told us she was again told the four underage operatives walked out of the store. Kripali Patel said it was not possible. They had it all documented on a surveillance camera for evidence, and she was advised she could bring the surveillance camera footage to the License Commission. So she denies having not carded, were, not carded the floor in question. Sorry, who knows, so they were well aware that there was going to be a violation hearing, and then they're, they're, no, they're not here. I'm, I'm troubled by this. Right. Well, they have. Um, they have given you. They had given you a statement, though, on the night in question. A verbal it? statement, from Sergeant Caputo, which you can, I can testify to its veracity under oath. But I just read you a summary of his statement. Okay. So they, um, they said it's impossible, but yet you send the, you send the kids into the store with nothing in their pockets except their cell phone and, and your twenty dollar bill. Yes. When we came in, uh, the younger of the two was very defensive. Um, the mother couldn't speak English that well, and she said, absolutely not, we ID everyone. And we were like, well, there's not much ways for them to exchange money and come out with alcohol if they didn't purchase it over the counter. And she was insistent that they had ID'd everybody and that they had it on surveillance footage, showed me the machine, and I said, great, bring it with you to the Lights Commission here. And, and do we have that? The machine, I'm informed, runs on a loop is a 24 hour loop so that the loop in other words it does not exist because it erases itself uh, on a 24 hour basis you're saying these clerks were who offered the tape and were aware of the violation allowed the machine to continue running that is my understanding as of right now yes you're you're aware Attorney Schimmel of the procedure, as I am too, I've heard this before, about how they send the kids in with nothing but, you know, no idea at all on yes, them yes. and all that. So um, uh, that this this obviously is not, you know, the statement that the daughter made the night of the alleged violation then is not, uh, is not in accord with the practice of the uh, NPD when they run these operations. And uh, does your client uh, did you quite understand the presentation that the uh, officer made about procedure that they used here?
They don't, deny, they don't deny the sale. They don't deny that the sale took place. Okay, I, I, I think we just need to clarify that. that yeah, they in do. fact, with respect to these four violations, your client is admitting it happened. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Um, one, yeah, one other, one other point of clarification again, maybe it's the thing, but uh, I've been to that store. The fish store is next door. I'll buy some fish. I'll buy some beer or some wine on my, my way out. And I've seen other people besides Mr. Patel, other other male clerks there. So it couldn't be the two people in question of uh, his wife and his daughter. But I've seen other people there. He has answered before that nobody else ever ever works behind the counter there. I have been in that store and seen other folks in there. Uh, depending on when we went to India, I got married last year in January as well. So the entire month of January, he wasn't here. He hired a temporary help, which is one of my friends and the other guy from Northampton that he knows and he only worked January. Other than that, you... Um, this is your mother and your sister and your father? Yes. And you don't work in the I don't know, no. All right. Um, I think that, I, I frankly, I think that they were... Again, I mean, obviously I wasn't there, I don't know, but I, I think that there was probably, frankly, I think that they were probably uh, afraid uh, of having made a mistake or the possibility of having made a mistake. But I, as I say, Mr. Patel, as he sits here tonight, is not trying to deny the violation. Uh, he wasn't there himself. I think, I I think we understand that. I think we might want to move on to the second violation. Yes. Uh, we will. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, the, um, the second violation occurred o over two nights, uh, the nights of the uh, uh, 15th and the um, 25th. So, Chief, would you like to make a statement on Again, these violations? The second part of the information received from UMass, part of it was people not being ID'd. The other part, people were presenting bad ideas. IDs are not acceptable form under the, the statute that I cited in my memo, um, which is just to remind you a valid mass driver's license, a liquor purchase identification card issued under Chapter 90, Section 8 or a valid passport issued by the U.S. government, or a valid U.S. military identification card proving the holder has attained the age of 21. And that's under uh, Chapter 90, Section 8, as applying to Mass General Law Section 34B. So uh, having known that we kind of had a two-pronged thing going, we also set up uh, a plain clothes patrol in our car. It turned out to be the same night, the way it's scheduled, to see any underage people that appear to be underage coming and going from the, the package store and then effecting a traffic stop. So we did have one of those where the individual, um, Sergeant Gulak, testified, uh, readily admitted the purchase of some rum, and he used the fake main uh, driver's license. Uh, I know the press had contacted Mr. Patel. He made some comments to the Gazette, so we were, we were very much aware that he was aware. Uh, we really wanted to set up another underage thing. We figured a couple of three weeks, if you know, he tightened up or didn't tighten up, we'd be able to find out. Uh, we couldn't do it, we couldn't put the underage operatives together, so we decided to go ahead with another surveil of the premises. Apparently underage kids going in and out, affect a traffic stop, find out if they're of age if they use the phony ID. And on the 15th of November, um, there was two of those incidents. Uh, I do have the IDs from that night, I don't have the ID from the original. The Sergeant Bola can certainly uh, summarize for you. Uh, circumstances of those three steps. Okay. Sergeant Gohler. Good evening. Can you identify yourself just for the record? Absolutely. Sergeant Joseph Gohler. Uh, with the Northampton Police Department. On uh, October 25th, at about 8 o'clock, myself and another officer were um, working in an alcohol surveillance uh, detail. We were in plain clothes in an unmarked car. Uh, we were positioned parked behind the Chinese food uh, restaurant, which is kind of adjacent to um, King Street Liquors, um, where we had a clear vantage point of the door in the front of the store. At about 8 o'clock, 
we saw um, a car pull in. Um, there was three males in the car. They all appeared to be young in age from our vantage point. Um, one male got out of the car, went in the store for a short period of time, came out with a plastic bag, got in the back seat, and they drove um, south on King Street. Based on our observations of the um, people in the car, they appearing to be underage, the um, current investigations by Sergeant Caputo and the knowledge of the Northampton Police Department that it was a, a popular spot for um, underage purchasing of alcohol, we stopped the car as it turned out on North Street. Uh, we identified three occupants in the car. They were all 18-year-old um, males from UMass. Uh, we recovered a uh, handle of rum from the back seat where the male had gotten in. Um, he admitted that he had gone into the store and he had purchased the bottle of rum using a fake main driver's license. We recovered the rum and the license from the male in the back seat. Um, they were all, all three of the males were very cooperative, forthcoming. Um, we um, told them they weren't gonna be arrested for the minor possession of alcohol. They offered up information that it was commonly known and they were referred by other UMass students to come to Northampton to King Street Liquors because it was, it was an easy way to purchase alcohol using their, their fake IDs from out of state. Um, similarly, on the... Can I just... They, they weren't arrested, but they were charged. Yes, this wasn't a quid pro quo thing. They were appropriately charged and summons for the violations, not arrested. All three males from that car what stopped. Does that mean? What does that mean that they had to go... It's an arrestable yeah. offense. But does that mean that they have to do an appearance in court, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. They're being summoned to court. I got you. My understanding is that license is evidence in court. That's why I don't have it. The keys I have right I got Two you. Three. Sorry. Just to clarify. Yes, yeah, so all three of the, the males on that stop were summons. Um, similarly, on the 15th of November, I was working the same um, type of grant, um, the same plainclothes uh, surveillance patrol. Um, parked in the same spot at the back of uh, the Chinese food restaurant at um, about quarter after uh, seven, I believe it was. Um, we saw a car come in. Again, it was four males this time, all of them appearing young in age. Um, one went in the store, I believe one went in the store. He came out with what appeared to be two larger boxes of beer, as well as a couple bags that looked like they contained bottles of alcohol. He was in the store for a short time, placed the items in the trunk, uh, again came out of the parking lot southbound on King Street. Based on all of the uh, knowledge we have of the establishment, our observations of the males being young in age, again, we stopped the car. Um, we identified four occupants in that car, uh, one 19-year-old male, and three 18 year old males. Uh, again, they were all cooperative, forthcoming. Um, we spoke with them, we recovered a 30 pack of beer, an 18 pack of beer, um, and I believe a couple, I have it here, a couple more bottles of alcohol, of liquor, um, from the trunk where we saw him um, put the items. Um, during the investigation, speaking with the male who we saw into the store, he admitted that he had purchased um, the alcohol using a fake Connecticut license. Um, he also told us that um, it was common knowledge for UMass students um, that they could go to King Street Liquors and purchase alcohol with ease, was, was how the report was written, um, using a fake out-of-state license. Um, and all four of those males also, due to the cooperation, lack of criminal record, the whole thing, they were, they were summoned to court. They were, they were charged with minor possession of alcohol. Um, we have the Connecticut license here. Do you see the ID, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, the... You notice the Connecticut one is just a label off the car, stuck on the place in the car. The fake licenses that, that uh, were in possession on, on any of these stops could also um, result in additional criminal charges. Those tend to be a little more serious. Um, the kids were all students. They were forthcoming, they were, they were cooperative. We seized their IDs and we didn't charge them with the, the possession of a buyer possession. Yes, sir. Um, 
Same date, approximately 45 minutes later, three girls appear young in age, pull in, same parking lot. We're parked in the same location. Um, the, all three of them go in the store. They're in for a short period of time. Um, they come out of the store, southbound on King Street. Um, based on our observations of them being young, knowledge of the establishment, we stop them up on Main Street in Northampton. Um, we recover two bottles of wine from the back rear passenger compartment of the car, identify all three females as being underage. I believe all three were 18 years old. Uh, no, all three were 19, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, with the backseat passenger, um, explained to us that she purchased the alcohol and she was in possession of that uh, fake uh, Canadian ID. She explained to us that she did not use it, that she was not asked for identification. But so, she still admitted to having that. So somewhere um, she, she has used that, obviously, in the past. And she said she purchased it online, I believe, for $50. But that night, she said she did not use the ID. She said that she wasn't asked for it. Um, give it a a lot of the, a lot of the uh, um, Sergeant Caputo could probably uh, speak on these much better than I am. He's, he's uh, teaches a class about these IDs. A lot of the fake IDs now still have some security features, but they're not the correct ones. Uh, but only, only, only the Connecticut license here in evidence. The Quebec license was never presented to the clerks at the store. That's what she, that's what she alleged. Okay. Yes. And who were the? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, for me again, who were the uh, clerks at the store at the time um, on, bo on both dates? On the, the 25th, I'm assuming that was, that was the same night that Sergeant Caputo identified the two female clerks um, for that stop uh, with the main fake license. On the 18th, he wasn't conducting the 15th. On the 15th, I'm uh, sorry, yes sir. Um, we didn't go back and follow up with the clerks because we were just strictly on a surveillance patrol where his operation was, was a little more in depth. We were targeting the, the underage aspect of it. And uh, we also surveilled other places that night. It wasn't just there. I um, it didn't, didn't come up with any other violations. Okay. Right. Do you have any questions for Sergeant Gold? Okay. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, uh, Again, I think that uh, the, the licensee does not deny that the, uh, that the events took place, that the sales took place. Uh, frankly, uh, the records are not clear, uh, I am told, as to who was actually working on that evening. Uh, so, it, but but again, there's no there's no denial that uh, that the that uh, alcohol was sold. Uh, the information uh, the inf information is simply there's been some discussion, but uh, it's. It's not entirely clear. Mr. Patel, uh, again, uh, it's it's been his statement that he believes that that he follows the law by 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 following mass IDs. Uh, I think that. Uh, Frankly, though, I think on the other hand, I think that there is some indication as a misunderstanding as to the proper forms of identification. And uh, I, I, I can't say based on what I'm hearing that, uh, that, that he recalls that he was working that evening, but again, I'm being, I'm being very straightforward here because I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come forward and tell you something that that, uh, that is obviously not accurate. We we believe that the sales took place. Frankly, we believe that uh, IDs were probably accepted when they shouldn't have been. 
non-Massachusetts ID. It's just a sticker. And, uh, you know, and I, and I think that, uh, I, I think frankly that the, the situation that, that is here is uh, what is required really is uh, uh, is addressing the, the the proper forms of ID, and I think, frankly, uh, uh, it, it calls out for you know, training and enforcement. And I think that's that's really what we have here. I think, frankly, too, there's as as we're experiencing here tonight. I think that there's some unfortunate. Uh, Misunderstandings in part language based as well, but uh, I'm not going to sit here tonight and try and you know represent that uh, something didn't happen that, that probably did take place. I think if a, if a licensee makes a mistake, they make a mistake, and uh, you know, I think that the I think the licensee respects the work that the police department does, and if, uh, and I think that the the discussion that we have had was that uh, uh, if, you know the law is the law and it's got to be complied with, and if that requires changes, if that requires specific things to make sure this doesn't happen again, that's frankly appropriate and. Uh, and obviously the commission is, uh, is uh, it's appropriate for the commission to decide at this point how to, how to address the situation. But again, I think I would, on behalf of the licensees, I want to make every, uh, every effort to communicate that they recognize that things took place that were wrong, should not have happened, and need to be addressed. Is that your statement, Ben? Yes. Okay, so everything I said. Uh, I have a question, you know, ask the others if they have questions as well. But uh, on the night of uh, the um, 15th of November, when the uh, car with the um, Smith students was, was stopped, do you recall who was the clerk at the time? And the police didn't go in, so we have no way of knowing. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, questions, Brian, of uh, the licensee or counsel? Elaine? No, I think I've got a pretty clear picture. Uh, may I say something before the decision? Please do. Yeah. Uh, my father, since things didn't this happen, since uh, 25th of October, my father has asked me to look for an ID scanner that is best for the liquor store that would work best and I've been trying to research and trying to come up with a better one. I already looked at three or four stores so going forward we are planning to buy an equipment that would help us to identify if IDs are fake or not. Like we are, that's, he's planning to invest it into the store. So just wanting to we are trying to take the preventative mess. Uh, okay. I, I'm aware of those so I'd like to hear from the chief on on, on that, if, did you have something? To you want to uh, on the ID scanner question? Or what? Well, I was going to offer. I mean, we assist all kinds of bars and restaurants because you know we have something to tons of schools. So, regardless of the outcome of this hearing, Sergeant Caputo can certainly help you look at what the state of the art is, what we believe is valuable. Yeah, I think they would welcome that. Yeah, I would definitely welcome that. Well. So, so that's what provide was in the right sort of so. regular training where they would sit down with the clerks at a or the, or the We don't do the training, we give them the technology that they have to invest in and the kind of prim yeah. primer on And them. Amherst Spiffy holds uh, serve safe classes at our station and community room regularly so we could get them in on that. Well that, that, that brings me to a question. Obviously were these clerks serve safe training or chips training? There's, there's training, not clerks training. No, it was, no, it was my father. No, no. Okay, I'm sorry, Chief, you were about to say something. Else. I was just waiting for my opportunity to 
make my final. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me just ask a couple of questions about this. Um, does uh, SPIFI or whatever it's called now, North Hampshire Prevention Coalition, do they sit down with uh, the, um, you know, the, either the bars, the taverns, or the, or the, the new source? North Hampshire Prevention Coalition just got a new coordinator, so I'm not sure where they're at mm -hmm. with that, but SPIFI holds regular classes for, I don't know if it's tips or serve safe, but they hold regular trainings. Right. And um, so nothing in addition to tips or serve safe. I don't believe so, but um, you know, uh, I'd have to talk to Chief see what he was comfortable with us doing. But I've I looked recently at the best ID scanner that's out there, and I can give him good stuff for the, the latest uh, publications for spotting fakes that law enforcement uses. And mm -hmm. I mean, even with a small investment of a you know ten times magnifier and hundred dollars worth of books, they'd probably be worlds ahead of where I they see. are now. So. And, and another thing that came to mind too that was the mention of the, the, the tape loop. I don't know if maybe you have some experience of if you might be able to advise the licensee on uh, just being able what would be an appropriate length of time for retaining tapes, etc. As well, I think that, that that strikes me as something that could potentially be helpful okay. as well. In spite of the violations that we're presenting here, we still will do outreach as necessary. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. other package stores, I forget if it was Joe, but every couple of weeks they call us and they give us a rubber band full of phony IDs that they've taken away from kids. And, you know, so part of it's education. But I also, when you're a license holder, you get explicit copies of the rules and the regulations and everything through the license commission. Um, and those are your rules. We're there to uphold them. State laws are the state laws. We're there to uphold them, and one of the reasons Massachusetts is so strict about IDs is because it will avoid any other phony IDs being passed off and accepted. But I think we're getting a little far afield okay. to the future. Right. Let's deal with the present. Sure, I do have one thing. <coughs> I'm going further in the future, but any security company can help them out with that. They're just uh, they're hard drives, and they go to 180 days, 240. So there's plenty, and they're short money. So we can't recommend anything. And I, I just want to make a point because I, I can feel very sympathetic to the position that Attorney Shimple's client is in, uh, Mr. Patel. It's a difficult position to come in and say that you were wrong. And I, I respect that. On the other hand, this is something that I suspect is not new nor do I suspect this is something that is limited to just these violations. The evidence doesn't seem to support that. And a licensee, I mean, it, it's a hard but necessary task for this commission. A licensee has to follow, at some minimum level, asking for IDs. If you can have all the expensive scanners in the world, but if you're just letting 18-year-olds walk in and walk out with, with bags of, of, of liquor, you know, I, I'm sorry, you know that that is not in accordance with Massachusetts I, law. I agree, I agree. And so I'm, I'm a little less sympathetic than I might be if, if there were some uh, undertrained clerks who had shown up for a temporary assignment. I don't think that's just the, the, what's going on here. So I'm Well, I, I, I did want to make every effort to indicate that there was no intention to dissemble here or to or to try and present this as something other than what it is. And I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Chief, did I, you have some I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean I have a point to um, take that a little bit further. I mean it is a package store and they own the business. So it's their due diligence that they should be up on the laws. I mean to say that they don't I know agree. what they are. I mean I own a business and I'm I'm, a, I'm forced every day. So I don't agree with that at all. I mean, especially if it was a little, if it was mainly a supermarket and they sold a little bit of beer. Maybe I could see something like that in that, but um, they're they're solid businesses of a package store. So they need to uh, Mm -hmm. They gotta really do what they have to as far as the uh, their due diligence and the laws. Chief, okay. so. in closing, I mean, yes. I believe on all the charges, all the violations, um, we met the burden of proof. Um, I know that Attorney Schimmel is doing his job to depict it as a mistake, but the reputation of an establishment throughout the Valley, college students, is not a mistake or two or three. 
these are kids buying liquor, driving multiple hour, hour, miles back and forth, um, you know, endangering themselves, endangering others. So a mistake, yes, a serious repercussions if something bad happened. Um, so I believe we met the burden of proof. I asked for the special meeting because just in timing, I felt it was serious enough to get it done as quickly as possible. So we send a message, uh, not only to the owners, but the other package stores. And also make sure the kids know that they don't have an easy place to go anymore. And there's one really quick comment, and Vic's here if you want to ask him, <clears throat> but he informs me he's been checking to see if Mr. Patel is in fact there a lot, and he is. But you have the occasion to go in off duty, plain clothes, just to buy, and didn't get asked for an ID. So, correct? Yes. Um, so, obviously, I over 21, but just it sounded like there was a lot of like I ID everyone, and that isn't the case because I you, just went in yesterday. And yeah. it's not. You, you have a youthful parent, so. <laughs> so, uh, and again, I ID. <laughs> there's things you do wrong and penalties you have to pay, and then right. whatever needs to be fixed, we can also be part of that. We don't have any hard feelings here outside of doing our job, but we also, you know, we need to make sure we do our job. And, okay. We're both in the Thank you, Chief. Enforcement and then the education. All right, thank you, Chief. All right, unless there's any other questions for any of the witnesses, uh, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Are there any other questions? No? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. So I got a second. All those in favor of closing the hearing? Uh, um, who who seconded? Uh, Brian. Um, we'll move to deliberation. Um, uh, let me uh, just go first here. Um, uh, well known on social media, the whole thing got started because they got a tip from the Dean of Students or somebody at UMass. Um, all, a lot of the kids admitted it was well known. Um, so it wasn't just happening on these nights, it was happening a lot. The, the word gets around, everybody goes. So it must have happened repeatedly repeatedly beforehand, and it's just, it's just good that you know, nothing really bad happened. As the chief pointed out, they're just trying to keep people safe. When they received word, they went in and, um, and, uh, and ran this operation and determined that, in fact, the allegations uh, on social media were, were true, that you could go in there, you need to not get ID or pass a fake ID and get, um, and get liquor. The fact that the clerks are not all tips trained is, is you know obviously a problem. I mean, I, you should be. I mean, to be in a package store, we we always ask the question whenever we're granting a new liquor license for um, uh, for service of alcohol, and uh, we ask also new applicants for a package store license if uh, the clerks the tips trained. Um, most recently, we had a manager change manager. We asked this question there. So, you know. Uh, no, no, no training to date, and despite Mr. Patel's own efforts to, to ask IDs, he left the store in charge of people who weren't similarly dil as diligent as he has said he is, and you know, word gets around, and um, kids are buying alcohol there, and uh, thanks to the police, you know, it, it will stop. But these violations are the worst that I have heard since I have been on this commission. And I would say a, a, a very heavy sanction um, is, is appropriate here. So um, is, uh, Elaine, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, I have to question whether this licensee is, in fact, competent to continue to hold a license. When I hear something like this, um, we can speculate that nothing bad happened. You know, there was kids weren't killed traveling back and forth. How do we know? There are kids taken from UMass all the time over to Cooley Dick every weekend, and they're getting the alcohol somewhere. And they're they're not just all having somebody who's 25 buy the booze. And I think it's one of the most important things that we do as a commission to try to ensure as much as we can that that stream of booze going to Smith or UMass or whatever, at least from our little vantage point, uh, is less. Um, and in, in this situation, Mr. Patel, I believe I heard him say, he's not even tips trained. So I'm, I'm sitting here saying, 
if we're going to allow this liquor store to remain in operation, and that is my question, whether there there is a reason to allow someone who's the tapes are missing, the main witnesses are missing. Um, again, I, I, we have an admission, a total admission to the reality that's been presented to us by the police, and I think the police did a, a, a really good job. I think they do this well, they do it all the time. So how do we craft a remedy that ensures that public safety, and I mean this in the broadest possible way, is in fact um, served, and served well. Um, and I'm right now, I'm, I'm going to, because I'm newest on this commission, I'm, I'm going to look for some, some institutional memory from uh, the chair as far as uh, available remedies, because um, if I had my druthers, I would say that this, this business should not run, should not reopen for business. It should be shut down and not reopen until all of the people who are working there have been properly trained so that we don't just have a continuation. I mean, my gosh, we have Sergeant Caputo saying, I went in there last night and I wasn't carded. So, and this is despite the fact that since October, this business person, this business owner, who I have a great deal of sympathy for, everybody wants to make a living, but the fact of the matter is, has known, has known that there's, there's issues, that they're being watched by the police, if you will, for liquor violations, and still they haven't changed their pattern of conduct. And I don't know, um, I, I don't want to speculate on motivation. I just want this behavior to radically change. If, if I could speak to that, I would. Well, I, I um, think we should No, let, no, I, I, let me go through this, and we will, we will vote on, um, as you know, on whether a violation occurred mm -hmm. after we have deliberated among ourselves. So I think both uh, both myself and, and Commissioner Real have said that we believe a violation, the violations occurred here. So let's hear from Commissioner Campidelli. I mean, it's been pretty well covered by my fellow commissioners, but I will say even the point of a electronic um, device that looks for that you have stated that you've been looking for, you've had since October 20, that, I mean, running a business, if it's something that important to you, within a week you should be able to solidify and have something in operation and working, if it's not that much to you. Uh, the only issue with that is some of the IDs, it only scans state IDs, it right. only scans all 50 state IDs. That's fine. It was a different situation. Okay, listen, there's got to be something out there, all right? And to do your own due diligence or to help your father do it, I mean, when you have to do it, you, there's a way to do it. Okay, so I, mean, I don't know what else to add to that. But. Well, do you want to speak to the violations themselves rather than the remedy that the, that the licensee could make? Uh, do you have I any mean, feeling on whether that, that they, it's evident that there's violations and they admitted to them? So okay. I'm not able to any. Uh, right. Well, then let's let's first take a vote then on the uh, violations. I'll take them as two. The first was the operation that you ran with Northampton Prevention Coalition with the four um, underage purchasers who were not asked for ID. And then the um, second one will be the, uh, the surveillance um, uh, violations. Uh, so on the first uh, set of violations where the police department um, um, had underage uh, persons purchase uh, alcohol without being asked for ID, uh, I'll make a motion that a uh, violation occurred in each inc incident. I'll second that motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And second then, and again, this is, let's just do this properly, even though the licensee admitted, the, uh, the surveillance where uh, three carloads of underage uh, persons were stopped by the police and had uh, purchased uh, liquor at the uh, licensee would be fake IDs or no IDs. Uh, I'll make a motion that a violation uh, was committed. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we've heard, we've had a hearing, uh, we've heard statements, we've um, talked a bit and we found the violation occurred. Now we'll move 
to uh, determine what sanction is appropriate in this case. At this case, at this point, I will uh, ask counsel for the uh, licensee to speak. Well, I, I, I must say that, I mean, if I were if I were on your side of the table, I would I would agree and uh, endorse what I'm here. It, it takes more than just talk. It takes something that is specific that addresses the problem, and that's critical here. And I think that that's that should be the aim in my mind. And I think that given the situation. It's entirely appropriate that the burden be placed on the licensee to take care of the issues that need to be taken care of. And having said that, that uh, there be uh, there be uh, a clear a clear indication that failure to do so would have severe consequences. And, and, and I think that that would be entirely appropriate. Uh, now, now the, the, obviously some of the things that have been suggested clearly tips training for anyone who works in the store. I think everyone should be tips trained as soon as possible. Uh, I think uh, a roster of people who work at the store established perhaps to show who works there and, and that their tips train uh, as, as within a uh, within a reasonable time the appropriate technology installed uh, and uh, then uh, frankly I would I would suggest that uh, you know the the, the the possibility of uh, of, of, a, of a suspension of a, of a significant suspension if, if it's not complied with would be appropriate. I think it's got it, it's got to be something that, that cures the problem and has has its own. Uh, built-in mechanism for uh, for failure, and and, and 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 that I think would be entirely appropriate. I think, in, in effect, the one thing I know is that the, the licensee appreciates that they they in effect have a license to dispense a, con a controlled substance, if you will, and. Uh, there's a heavy responsibility that comes with that, and uh, I think that it would be entirely appropriate for the commission to craft something that, that, that makes sure that the law is complied with and uh, that this does not happen again. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so let's move now to uh, consideration of, uh, of a sanction of for my part, um, as I said before, this is one of the worst things I've heard since I've been on the commission. This is the most um, uh, clear, blatant non-compliance with the law that I've seen any licensee have. And it, it, again, as I said before, has gone had gone on for, for many months beforehand, obviously, or else it wouldn't have been well known to the college community that this was the place to go to score alcohol. So um, I, I, I can't see any excuse here. Really, there's none. And the fact that we don't even have the clerks in question for the uh, night of the, uh, of the uh, 25th um, just makes this even worse. But if no I might just add on that, just very briefly, I considered at some point coming in and asking for time to have them here and specifically decided not to do that because I felt it was too important to not go forward on this immediately. All right, well then, and let me just answer, that's not, that's not the most important thing that you probably suspect for me here. It's just, it's just one of the things, but it's by no means the, the chief one. I, I think I said they, they in this case, we, uh, 
there's failure to ask for ID, there's, you know, they accept phony IDs, uh, everybody knows it, they go into this place as soon as the police set up their operation, they say, you know, it's true, and it's true in spades. So I think that, um, I think we sh I, I'm proposing right now, and uh, I'll let you guys decide as well to propose something else if you think it's, this is not uh, what you would want to see here, but I propose that the, uh, that the uh, license be, um, be surrendered for two months and that the uh, time be used for thorough training of uh, the staff, tips training, or sort of safe training for the staff, that the, that the, that the package store not be in operation at that time, and that we will uh, allow them to reopen uh, only on uh, receipt of uh, certification. In fact, all the staff has been trained. If they want to buy any technology for an ID scanner, that's fine. But I want to see uh, proper training. And that for a period of six months after the two month suspension has been served, that we, um, that we hold them uh, accountable that if the NPD finds any further violations that, um, that we uh, would then uh, meet in a violation hearing at that time to consider a more serious and perhaps longer lasting or even permanent sanction here. But uh, for now I'm proposing this two months uh, closure and a six month probationary period. But that's just a suggestion for a motion. No, no, it's a suggestion I want you to, I want you to discuss and tell me whether I'm all wet. Well, I, I, I don't want them operating anymore at this point in time until they have recalibrated this business to meet the basic minimum of the law. We should not allow this business to continue in operation. Um, two months, I, I think two months should be adequate time for them to get the technology they need to, to get the, the, um, to get the training that everyone needs and to perhaps also understand just how serious this is and how close they came to having their license revoked because that was my initial reaction. Um, and I would, I would go further. I would say that they would be on a six month probationary period and if during that time that we uh, run another sting or the police department or the ABCC comes in town and, and, and follows up, which is another enforcement agency obviously that we all we all answer to and this happens again um, that they from my point of view will be at risk of having a permanent permanent revocation at so that would, would that, would, that would trigger yes that would trigger us to um, we would put that in the in the sanction that if a further violation I, I occurred in the six months yeah, I want that we would we would permanently suspend we uh, the uh, Pakistan. Uh, that's what I would be willing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would have to say that I agree with both of what you said, just uh, because of the severity of you know, children being involved. It's just a uh, so I would uh, appreciate one of you to make a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion that the uh, license for uh, King Street Liquors be suspended for, for two months um, starting um, starting tomorrow, um, close up shop tonight, um, and that um, the owner um, uh, not um, not open for business during that two month period, and that subsequent to that two month period, we we will uh, want certification that all staff has been tips or sort of safe trained. And that, furthermore, from for a six-month period uh, after the two-month suspension has been served, that they are on probation. And if um, the NPD or the ABCC or anyone finds a further violation, that um, that uh, permanent revocation of the package store license would be considered. Does that address your? I second. Okay. Does that say it the way you want to say it? Okay. All right, we, it's been moved and seconded. Did you get that? Okay, did you get that? All right. Uh, it's moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you.